Alright, and we're back for another episode of the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. It's Gerald Glassford coming right back at you here from Pop Culture Cosmos. The Lakers Fast Break, Inside Sports Fantasy Football and Game Source. We truly appreciate everyone out there listening to all of our great shows. And if you can, 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 please give us that five star review on Apple Podcasts. Kevin's got that down pat. I love him. I love him. And also as well, if you can please support the Kev Pod on YouTube, that's also would be greatly appreciated. Cannot thank you enough for doing so. All the great things that we're doing here at the Lakers Fast Break. But I've got a great guest on. He is a returning one indeed. It is the man behind the Kev Pod. You got to check out what he's doing today at Kev Pod, K E V P O D, on YouTube. It is Kevin Somani. And Kevin, what a busy week you've had in the NBA. Yeah, it's too damn busy. It's like, it feels like whenever, like, the trade uh, opened just this Monday afternoon at US time. But, you know, when you see the trades coming out, it feels like months ago because there's so much activity popping up. Like, there was some back channeling going on, and there were obviously some trades which are possibly happening. Just before the announcement came, we got to know that Dennis Roder is joining Lakers. And soon as the window opened, and like, it was a bomb dropping every time something new is coming up. It's like, it's crazy. I mean, Monday was just like all coming at you. Trade, 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 trade. Boop, 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 boop. Watch out, watch out. More trades, more trades. Then Tuesday, <laughs> we all kind of like took an exhale. <sighs> then, and then Wednesday, the draft. Okay. yeah, right into the draft on Wednesday. Now, Thursday was also important today because the fact that you had a lot of people opting in or opting out of their contract. Uh, Avery Bradley, for instance, opted out. JaVale McGee opted in for the Lakers, but there were several other smaller trades that were also made and conceived uh, on Thursday. Plus, again, a lot of people deciding whether or not they wanted to become an unrestricted free agent or not. So it is very important right now as we head into free agency early, well, actually midday Friday U.S. time, it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out all weekend long because there's going to be a lot of activity there. So there is right now no way we can slow down watching the NBA, but it's just very exciting. And you know what? I understand the way 2020 is mapped out with all the issues and all the problems and all the concerns. And obviously I want everybody to be safe and healthy. But for right now as an NBA fan, it really doesn't get much better than this. Obviously, and you know this this particular free agency has just you know changed my whole sleeping cycle because you know you're staying in uh, the whole other part of the world, and you know, there's so much happening, and this whole this whole uh, you know the whole youth who has this FOMO kind of thing which has affected me as well. So nowadays I'm I'm like awake the whole night and sleeping the whole day, punking out my college, but I always you know I'm always geared up for getting trades and to be honest uh, I have never had so many notifications in my life that I had in the past two to three days it's constantly popping up and all stuff and there's some awe trucking trades going on there I don't know what's happening in the NBA this is just the whole over, overhaul coming down uh, but yeah still there's still a lot to happen there's still a lot of remaining because the chaos for the NBA draft has happened, but not the free agency. Yeah, no, no, I tell you what, there's so much. In fact, while you were talking, I was checking out Shams Sharania's and Adrian Wojnarowski's Twitter. You have to keep notice because they will be the center focus of the basketball world coming up here tomorrow. Yeah. They were had a busy day today reporting on all the free agency as far as who's going to be part of it, who's going to be not. The trade as far as Kelly Oubre Jr. going to Golden State in the aftermath of the, that we found out about Clay Thompson and his torn, fully torn Achilles injury, which will send him out another year. And I really feel for Clay Thompson and the Golden State Warriors, a very unfortunate thing to happen. Just truly uh, a very sad sign because – he plays such beautiful basketball. He's got a, such an probably one of the best shooters, if not the best shooter that's out there as far as from running those pick and rolls and just a great defender as well. But from the standpoint, so let's go and hit that first. When it comes to Clay Thompson, what do you think will this will do as far as and how it will impact the Golden State Warriors? Well, uh, the the news have came just before the draft started uh, that Clay Thompson has some kind of 
injury and today it was con- uh, confirmed that it was a torn achilles but still i was kind of shocked that uh, you know golden state warriors still went for james wiseman because you know it was not it was it was kind of an anticipated trade but still golden state was seeking some kind of moving down to the draft but now when clay thompson is injured it's one year whole one year going and he's going to turn 31 so this can be a rebuilding phase for the golden state warriors because uh steps steps aging down uh clay thompson's aging down then uh, draymond green has no has no particular good contract and the signing of james wiseman alongside andrew wiggins and now kelly obre junior coming inside it feels like warriors should go for a rebuilding phase i wouldn't say it's end of a dynasty obviously that dynasty was whole well great but now it's the time that they need to look more ahead than stephen curry and clay thompson because i don't see the prime staying so much long like they have 2 to 3 years at the max to play and then that they need to get for the build up so rather than taking the risk uh, stephen curry coming out and taking the whole offensive load alongside andrew wiggins i feel they should come again with a whole rebuilding phase make a whole new team well i i don't think they're going to pull the plug on that just yet just because they've spent so much money they are so over the cap especially with this kelly ubre trade this kelly ubre junior transaction that they got where kelly ubre junior is now moving over to golden state with their trade exception but there's so much involved as far as going over the cap it's estimated that it, it might cost an extra 60 to 80 million dollars just to have kelly ubre there because of the cap situation that they're in and they they can't fill the chase arena with crowds because of what's going on with the coronavirus so that is a very big question but again it comes down to how much of a window do you have left with stephen curry how much of a left uh, window left do you have with Draymond Green? Obviously, they feel that that window's closing, so they want to try to maximize it as much as possible. So I get that. But, yeah, there's some very concerning times if you're a Golden State Warriors fan. Obviously, the thoughts and prayers are from us when it comes to talking about Clay Thompson and yeah. his best wish. And, yeah, absolutely. Want to see get all the best. Get well soon and, and hope for the best when it comes to Clay Thompson. Hopefully, that he'll be able to come back strong and healthy come next season although it'll be so sad because he by then by the time he actually gets a chance to play on the court once again it he will not have played since june of 2019 so that'll be very sad that's we're talking two years uh two calendar years probably until he gets a chance to really go ahead and perform the way he he really wants to so uh actually well no also, also it'll be about two and a half years whole... almost maybe so that, that's gonna yeah. be yeah yeah also this whole narrative affects the storyline of yana santen tekum for coming yeah. down to golden state warriors because already are going over the cap and this year which was supposed to be not a so heavy free agency the 2021 is expected to be a free agency but you just see the way the player options are coming out Anthony Davis came out. Uh, well, by Anthony, but that's just a formality. I think everybody expects Anthony Davis to sign because when your only competition is really for money, if you're talking about sheer money, New York cleared $40 million of cap space. Atlanta yeah. has, has around $40 million of cap space. When those are your choices between the Lakers that can re-sign you for, for that amount or, or Atlanta and New York, we, we pretty much essentially know where he's going to go. When it comes to Golden State, however, I don't know if they were even on their best situation would have been able to clear enough cap to satisfy Giannis to come over yes. there. I mean, Miami could clear more cap space. I think that probably would have been probably a better choice, and that still could be in play. We don't know for sure. The Bogdanovich trade that everybody thought was a done deal, Bogdanovich said, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, that no, ain't happening. No. No, that ain't happening with us. <laughs> so Bogdanovich is now a free agent, and that deal spoiled. So they did get Drew Holiday, who they had to overpay heavily for with three draft yes. picks, two point guards, and two pick swaps. So that's just a major overpay for Drew Holiday. But he is a very good player coming over to Milwaukee. I will say this, my friend. You and I are going to be obviously monitoring the free agency as this way as it goes as far as the whole weekend is concerned. But you know, tell me about who do you think the Lakers 
you know, who do you hope that the Lakers will get as far as in the coming days in free agency? I want to see if those predictions will come true. I want to listen back to this on after we drop it and a couple of days goes by and, and see what happens and go, you know what? Kevin had it right on the spot. Well, it actually happened previous time as well when I talked about Miami Heat getting to the finals. You know, I talked yeah, about did. Miami Heat and Dark also. I hope so, but uh, to be honest, I don't have anyone in my mind as of now for Lakers or for any team because I'm still, you know, getting hold of what everything is because, uh, you know, there are a lot of player options on the free agency list. Uh, and to be, to be really honest, I really don't know what's going to happen, but... Why do I feel New York is going to do something? Because they already cleared three of its players, and there are rumors of Russell Westbrook coming. I don't know what the situation is. What the situation is there? Charlotte is not. Charlotte is not, and New York are not going to take Russell Westbrook's bad contract you, unless you give them a whole bunch of uh, draft picks on top of it. Uh, I, yeah, I wouldn't. I would not say. I mean. Obi Toppin, they're very happy at New York about getting that yeah. pick. That's that's who they were say they were targeting. Uh, in Charlotte, they have Lamelo Ball. I mean, you, you, if you put Russell Westbrook there and you have two non shooters that are both passing guards or kind of passing guards, and Russell, well, okay, Russell's like uh, he gets the assists. Let's put it that way. I'm going to say that that probably would be a very bad mix. So I think they're just going to go ahead and ride it out with Lamelo in Charlotte. I think that Russell Westbrook, they'll try to trade him, but I think at some point right right now, if J- James Harden and Russell w- Westbrook both want to go, I think James Harden is the one they're going to be able to move quicker because they're, yeah. they're he's just more wanted out there in the league. He's more wanted out there, and he has been more expressive about he wants to leave the team because he doesn't see any future there. So it would be hard for for Russell Westbrook who has not been performing that great and his performance last year was also not so good even in the postseason so yeah Harden has a chance but I guess Russell would be stuck there in uh, Houston Rockets it, it might be the case and uh, I don't think he'll be a happy camper if that's if that's that's uh, that's what happens I also think that if James Harden does get traded and he wants to be traded to Brooklyn we all hear those rumors I don't know if Brooklyn has enough as far as to be able to trade uh, for, uh, you know, that Houston want. But again, I I think at some point Houston will trade James Harden if he's that unhappy. It may not be at the start of the season, but by the trade deadline, you could definitely see that happening if if Houston doesn't perform up up to what their expectations are. And I'm not sure that they will be. I mean, they already sent off Robert Covington, so I'm not sure what they're doing in Houston right now. Yeah, the other they're acquiring assets and getting first round picks, but they're also in the process of going ahead and trading away key components of their of their offense. So they're tough to figure out. But I will say that in Philadelphia, where Daryl Morey went to from Houston, it's become quite interesting. Do you like what you saw? What Philadelphia got as far as the trades that they made for a lot of outside shooting? They did trade away Al Horford. They did pick up Danny Green. They did trade for him because Danny Green went to Orla- Oklahoma City, and then now he's gone to Philadelphia, so he's traveling a lot. But did you like what you saw what Philadelphia did in the past couple of days? Well, actually, uh, when talk about Daryl Morey and Doc Rivers working together, I just feel it's a great fit because you have an analytics guy who just turned the whole game, and then you've got someone like Doc Rivers who – who has been in this league for so far and he has got a good good history of developing players and you know with this team he sent away Josh Richardson you know I was reading these articles online and there's one this article which says that they sent away Josh Richardson Paul Horford with a lot of salary bloat going away and they took in actual shooters in Danny Green and Seth Curry so what, what that feels like is they just made actually a team. They made an actual team. So, yes, there's a lot of potential still for Philadelphia. I, they might have some more cocks to pull out, some more gears to fit in. But yes, now the picture looks clear for Philadelphia that what way they are heading and around whom they want to make a whole franchise, which is basically Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid who are both, uh, Ben Simmons is someone who avoids taking three-pointers, but he's good at mid-range or driving to the rim, whereas Joel Embiid is more of a traditional kind of center. And when you have that 
3 and D kind of players, you are just making a really good team. So Philadelphia has improved from the situation it was before. This is Raphael from NBA Draft Junkies.com, and you are listening to the Lakers Fast Break. Check out what's been going on with the Pop Culture Cosmo Show and the PCC Multiverse. I see the potential for basically like another Netflix kind of paradigm shift where here comes this other major player. They have a ton of resources. Apple could change the way that entertainment is consumed. They say it's the only time this year that you'll have stars from each brand battling each other. And we know it's not going to be the case, but they like to say that and more power to them, I guess. Well, it's a big first step bringing all those superheroes together. There were definitely some parts of the movie that I that I really enjoyed. And then there were some parts that I thought just kind of fell short of expectation. Part of it has to be something to do with how it's being promoted. And this is a thing where audiences do not agree with critics. That's the Pop Culture Cosmo Show. And the PCC Multiverse, every week on Apple Podcasts. And over a dozen of your favorite streaming and podcasting options. Last thing I want to talk to you about, my friend, is your hopes for the NBA season now that training camp is coming around on the 1st of December, and that's the season will start in December 22nd. From what you're seeing right now, as far as the smoke kind of clearing, what the trades are so far, but we could see a lot more coming up in the next few days. Who do you think has an early advantage as far as the, the next season is concerned? Next season is concerned. It's still the same. I refrain from giving predictions, no early advantages for anyone. You know, the way the Kawhi Leonard balance has been and the way it has stayed till now, I feel, you know, this is going to be a same competitive season. Still like a whole 50-50 for anyone. And the new NBA regulations came in the playing tournaments, the 7th and 8th seed playing tournaments. It's going to be a whole different kind of thing. And the season starts, it will take it will take actually a, uh, you know, a couple of days to just get into the flow that what's actually coming on. And, you know, this, this uh, free agency which was not supposed to be so, so bombshelling, uh, it's turning out to be bombshells every time. So I really don't know what to expect from the season. I'm just sitting as a fan. I'm sitting as a spectator, just waiting for the season to start and all the roller coaster ride which is going to happen from today till the NBA starts. Well, my friend, you're going to be, and I'm going to be, and all NBA fans are going to be bombarded with a whole bunch of Woj bombs coming up in the next few days, plus a lot of Sham bombs as well from Sham Sharania. So you're gonna, you and I are going to be on our Twitter just going like, refreshing 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 because we want to see the latest news that's happening and i will be getting back with with everyone out there that's listening on the lakers fast break to give them updates on what's going on with free agency we'll talk about that i think on the sunday show that we but kevin before we head on out i also want to tell you that you're always welcome back as you know the i told you before the red carpet is always open for you to come back on the show you just got to hit me up when you want to come back on because it's always open for you. But before we head on out, my friend, you got to tell everybody about the Kev Pod and whatever you're doing out there in social media or anything that that you really want to go ahead and publicize about. But the floor is yours, my friend. Go ahead and let us know what's up with the Kev Pod. Yeah. So yes, I've been uh, very inconsistent with my podcast lately. That is because being a student, I have a lot of assignments to give. So keeping my studies as a first priority. Of course. Uh, I, I have not worked on my podcast, but yes, there's a lot of happening in football. There's a lot of happening in basketball. So I'm just, you know, getting prepared for everything. And slowly, slowly, I hope that from next month onwards, I'll start posting. And Gerald, just to say, NBA season is starting from 22nd December, which is 23rd December in India. And that happens to be my birthday. So, uh... you know, that's, that couldn't be any great gift for me just uh, to, to experience uh, you know this amazing thing happening on my birthday so yeah that's the thing and yes a lot is going to come from the Kev pod and also I hope Gerald would soon come on my podcast to talk about some basketball you know you just gotta let me know when and where I'll be there my friend sure. absolutely always got to make a shout out to some great individuals out there in your beautiful country and then obviously you as well my friend anything for the kev pod because you've been such a great part of this show 
cannot thank you enough. And again, check out the Kev Pod each and every time when he starts putting out new things that are out there. You want to check out it is the Kev Pod, K E V P O D. Just type in K E V space P O D on YouTube. It comes right up. He's got some great shows that you can check out already. And I know more good things are coming up on the Kev Pod. And we're going to check out all the great things that are going on this weekend because free agency is here. I'm so excited. The NBA will not let me catch my breath because the NBA free agency is going wild starting tomorrow. And we're going to tell you and give you updates on what's going on right here at the Lakers Fast Break Podcast.